Hello, everyone, and welcome to Level Editor 101 for Unreal Tournament 2003. My name is Jason Busby, also known as Buzz, and tonight I'm being joined by Mr. Logan Frank, also known as Jayhawk. Jayhawk. And we're from 3dbuzz.com. Our mission tonight is throughout a series of video lessons within this VTM to show you guys the basics of Unreal Ed version 3.0. Now, I said the basics. I say that because things can get pretty deep while working inside this editor right here. And if we tried to go over everything, it would take more than a couple of hours, wouldn't you say, Logan? Most definitely. And our goal is not to go on and on and on forever and ever and ever. So with that... Let me first tell you guys how we're going to be doing things through these video lessons. In this particular VTM, Logan is going to be doing the driving, and he's going to be doing a lot of the talking. And I'm going to be sitting over here also doing talking and acting as a student from time to time. What I want to do is help some of you guys out there that may have never worked with any level editors or any type of level design in the past. I want to kind of anticipate the questions that you may have and ask those questions live while we're going through this so that you'll sort of get the feeling of actually be in a classroom. We have found through VTMs that this facilitates learning a lot faster than just your regular slow training video, which we're hoping not to keep it that way, hoping to make it a little bit more interesting. In fact, let's start by making your heart pound a little bit by saying what you're looking at on your screen right now is the actual level editor with a level in it. And this level is a little special because we're actually going to be building it tonight, aren't we there, Logan? Yes, we are. Hmm. Now, if I was completely new looking at that, I would be thinking you're going to be building that in just a couple of hours. Yeah, right. You're going to start out by like making a simple cube, and then you're going to go off camera, come back, and have this massive level built and say it's just that simple. But we're not going to do that, are we? No. We're actually going to carve, out, carve this thing out piece by piece and show you how it's put together. So we're going to actually construct it right in front of our viewers, right? Right. Excellent. Most excellent. All right. So with that understanding out of the way, Let's go ahead and start out with the basic anatomy of a level. Let's just go ahead and talk about some of the terms that our viewers are going to hear throughout this VTM and while they're talking with other level designers out there on the Internet. So starting out with, in the Unreal world, when you go to create a level, it starts out as solid mass. Before you've constructed anything, it's not like you're standing in a world of emptiness and you start constructing walls. It's different. As it, it's as if you were just born inside a rock with a little bitty shovel, and you need to start digging your way out. Isn't that right, Logan? Right. You want to add anything to that? No, nope, that sounds good. Okay. So basically you start carving stuff out. And as you carve out, let's say you start out with a simple cube and you carve a cube out. And we'll be taking a look at this uh, in the very next lesson, as a matter of fact. But then you can go in there and you can start adding pieces back in. You can start applying textures. And what are textures, Logan? Textures, in, in this sense that we're talking about, are the textures that you would actually apply to these brushes. Like after you carve out, you can actually go and put textures on what you just carved out or a simple piece of mass that you added back. Okay. So we can also add mass back in as well. You just said right. that that's very important. That's, that's your basics. You can carve out, but then you can also add back to get your general shape going. Okay. And in this carving out and adding back in, we're working with a thing called brushes. Isn't that correct? Right. So what's a brush? A brush kind of like it defines the space that your geometry is going to be in. I mean, if you carve something out, you you have faces that you carved out. Like if you carve out a box, you're going to have six faces. If you add another box inside that, now you're going to have six more faces, but that you can see once you're inside your level. Okay. So the first one you just described, you actually carved out. The second one you were going to add back in there then. Right. Okay. So a brush, basically, we're going to start out with a constructor brush where that is where we're going to basically mold the shape that we're going to use for subtraction or adding back in. Right. That's more like a uh, like a preview brush or template brush. It's going to sh you get to see exactly what it's going to look like, but it hasn't actually added any geometry to the scene yet. Okay, cool. All right, so that's a little bit about brushes and a little bit about texturing. We're also going to be dealing with actors and let me just let me get this out of the way real quick actors is basically everything right right i mean a brush is an actor as well yeah at the lowest level it's the, they're all actors exactly but you know when we start talking about actors a little bit later on throughout this vtm right here we're going to be referring to things like lights weapons things like that yeah right? your player starts stuff like that player start decoration etc cetera, etc cetera. but just know that actors is basically everything so we will be taking a look at adding actors into the scene a little bit later on also, we'll talk a little bit about static meshes and terrain. So what's a static mesh? 
A static mesh is, it can be very high poly due to the fact that it's hardware rendered, generally created in uh, Max or similar 3D modeling program, also textured in that program. Okay, so a static mesh is not a brush that we create inside Unreal. No, it's, it's something that we bring in from somewhere else. Okay, excellent, from another 3D package. Right. And the cool thing is, we're actually going to be doing a static meshes VTM here real soon that's going to show people how to actually construct these static meshes and texture them and light them and then bring them into Unreal Tournament. Now, let me ask you this. Do we, is there any advantage whatsoever to using a static mesh? Well, seeing as the fact that it's, um, it gets cached on the video card and is set up to uh, set up as an instance, which saves memory, you can have like you have many thousands of polygons on the screen and not really feel any impact in the performance. I mean, you can easily have 20 or 50 thousand polygons on the screen from static meshes, but then the gameplay will stay smooth. Excellent. As a matter of fact, right now, if they are watching the screen, you can turn off all of those static meshes real quickly. And you can see exactly what things look like without them there. Whoa, suddenly it's quite bare. So go ahead and turn those back on. Whoa, it's just come back to life. So, yeah, static meshes are, are meshes that we can bring into the scene that really help speed, thing up, speed things up and gives us the ability to add quite a bit of detail, which is absolutely awesome. So terrain. What's terrain? Terrain is more like a it's a height map based sheet of polygons in a sense. Okay. It allows you to do smooth or jagged if you wanted, but it gives you a large surface that you can define from a height map. Okay, excellent. Very, very cool. All right, let's see. What else we need to talk about? So lights, of course, we can add lights into the scene we need to to give illumination, right? Right. Okay, so we'll be looking at adding some lights tonight. And finally, after we go in there and we use brushes so that we can do subtractions and, and adding stuff in, and we bring in static meshes, and if we were to use any terrain, and we start placing various actors all over the scene and our lights and our textures and all that stuff's out of the way, then we've got to do a thing called rebuilding. Isn't that right? Right. So what is this rebuilding? Rebuilding is where it takes the, the current position of your brushes and your, and your lights and recalculates uh, stuff like where the actual geometry is and how shadows are, ca uh, how are cast from those lights. Okay. So once all of this is complete, then you can actually go and play the game or play the level. Right. Like this. Okay. So let's go ahead, before we move out of this lesson, let's take just a minute and kind of walk around the screen and just look at the basics of how the UI is set up and then we're going to start getting into the functionality of all of these different buttons throughout this VTM and other VTMs as well. So in other words, right now, even though we are going to talk about a basic overview of the UI, we're not going to get into it really deep. First thing I'd like to point out is we've got these viewports, these very large windows right here. As you can see, the mouse is moving over. And these viewports serve as our window into the 3D world in which we're going to be constructing the actual level. And we will be having a section coming up a little bit later on called Viewports where we're going to take the time to talk about how to navigate inside viewports and various view modes in which you can see your geometry displayed back out at you. Okay, so Logan, you want to go ahead and start? Uh, okay. Let's see, start at the top, menu bar. Menu bar, the, uh, uh, a lot of your main functions, of course, the basic uh, load, save, new Actually, map. Actually, a little bit higher, the menu bar at the very top. Okay. This is where you have file where you have stuff like load and save maps, edit to show like you can actually copy and paste or uh, various duplication and the sh uh, shortcut keys to it, undo and redo. View where you can show, you can grab different browsers, you can grab different properties. This is also where you get into the viewport configuration, which we'll probably be taking a quick look at a little later. You've got brush for different operations you can apply to brushes, also with different ways of importing and exporting uh, different things as brushes. Uh, build different, uh, basically what these buttons do, the, uh, the rebuild options and various forms of rebuilding. Tools, stuff like uh, the 2D shape editor and just extra utilities that you'll be working with. And then help, links to various other parts of the help. Okay. Also, I will go ahead and point out right now that from time to time you will see some anomalies in our viewports. Don't let that stress you out. They'll clear up relatively quick. It's just something that happens depending on your video drivers. You may see it worse. It may be a little bit better. Who knows? Okay, so coming down from that, we've got this toolbar across the top where the first three icons are going to let us do new map, open, save. Then we move over to the arrow left and right, and this lets us undo and redo. 
And then moving over to that, we've got an actor search button. This allows us to quickly come in with a dialogue and search for specific actors. As a matter of fact, Logan, go ahead and click on that. You can see it brings this dialogue up right here, and we can set a filter on the right-hand side. We can type in a name, and as Logan actually begins to type, you can see that it starts to narrow down the actors. And as we said earlier, that actors is basically everything. Right now he's showing you lights, but a second ago when he started to actually type a B for brush, you saw brushes were being listed in there as well. So you can come in here and you can filter by name, event, and tag. And this becomes really helpful later on when you've got a scene that's just you know heavily pop populated. So anyways, this is a quick way of searching for actors and selecting them. So we'll go ahead and close that out. Uh, after that, we've got a series of icons here that basically give us access to various browsers. And Logan, you want to talk about some of these browsers real quick? Okay, browsers are what... Uh, allow you to load in and view stuff so, such as uh, actual actors, uh, various textures, various static meshes, and other very important content uh, uh, elements like that. Okay, so real quick, go ahead and open up the, let's say, the actor browser. So from in here, you're saying I can basically dig down through a hierarchy and find a specific actor that I may want to add to the scene or... All right, add a pickup base or under that a weapon, uh, a weapon base okay. if you're going to actually go to add a weapon into the level. Okay. I can also get to code for these actors from here as well, can't I? Right. Simply double-click, or you can right-click and view, on, view the code. Okay. Not meaning to scare anybody out there that's completely new to this stuff, but just want to show you this is quite powerful. Yeah, it's in there. Okay. So let's go ahead and bring up uh, – let's see. Go, in fact, go ahead and just show some of the different browsers if you don't right. mind. Also notice that you have a set of tabs, which also correspond to some of these buttons. So these buttons just basically give you quick access. Once you already have a browser window open, you can switch in between the different browsers just by using the tabs if you wanted to switch over to static meshes, say. Okay. Show us the static mesh. Show us how this browser thing works. All right. This one have, has a 3D window, which is very helpful to view static meshes. So you can kind of pan around and... Um, yeah, you might want to pull something in there that's a little bit bigger or easier to see. All right. Let me just load So right now you're opening a package, aren't you? Right. See, so it had a few loaded in that were set as defaults that would come up with the editor or that I had been using, uh, you can go back to the files that these brushes actually came from and load them up out of those files. So I could load up this uh, specific file, and then we can go and kind of filter through some of these different meshes. And again, these were constructed in another 3D application and then brought over into the level, right? Right. Uh, okay. So, uh, so anyway, so these are various browsers, and we're going to be using these browsers as we dig deeper and deeper into level design. So you can go ahead and close that there, Logan. Okay. All right, so if you want to pick up with the 2D Shape Editor. and All right. 2D Shape Editor, it uh, lets you draw out um, a shape and then allows you to do interesting things with that shape. You can go in and manipulate these vertices, add more vertices, uh, clip edges, and so on. And when you're done, you can either extrude that straight out into a 3D brush, you can revolve that, and other interesting things. It's very useful to pr uh, provide, like, curving-type architecture. Awesome. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and finish off talking about the last few icons that are left up there. All right. You have uh, the script editor, which opens up that window that we clicked on when we double-clicked uh, uh, an actor. Also, you have uh, uh, actor and surface properties. There's other shortcuts and w ways of getting to these, which we'll be looking at. And then these set of buttons uh, control various aspects of rebuilding. If uh, you have a few shortcuts to rebuilding, like, say, just geometry or just lights or just only to change lights, uh, your uh, paths, meaning, like, the navigation that bots will use, uh, to find their way around the level. And finally, have a button that will let you build everything, uh, your geometry, lighting, and all your paths. And finally, you have uh, the button to set where you go and grab all your settings, like what levels to build stuff to, what format to save the light maps to, etc. Okay. And then next to that, we got a little joystick, and this allows us to go and actually play the map that we're working on. And then finally, we've got context-sensitive help on the end where we can click this and then go click various things that we may be looking for help on. Okay, so from there, the last thing, we'll go and switch over to the far left-hand side. You see we've got a series of icons running down in toolbars over here. And basically, this section is divided up into six different categories. And, Logan, if you want to go ahead and start off by closing them all up except, let's say, the very first one. Okay. This will just kind of make things really simple for a beginner looking at this. All right, the very first one is our camera and miscellaneous icons. You want to talk about some of these real quick? All right, the camera, uh, this is the default one that's selected. This will um, leave a couple of buttons free for different uh, camera moving operations, which we'll be getting into in the viewport section. Okay. So you have vertex editing, which will allow you to isolate certain brushes that you want to move the individual vertices on. 
you have brush scale and brush rotate. What these will do is take some of the buttons that you would normally new, uh, use for moving the camera and allow you to uh, manipulate brushes and more axes. Okay. You have your texture pan and rotate if you want to adjust textures uh, from the viewport instead of from the surface editor. You have uh, some brush, uh, brush clipping. This will allow you to go into a mode where you can start uh, placing clip markers. We'll get into the, um, the tools that use that later. You have a free, uh, freehand brush drawing tool. You have uh, face drags and, and some various other stuff. Okay, very good. And so the next section, if you want to go ahead and open it up, would be, excuse me, brush clipping. Okay, that's where we have the uh, the tools specific to just brush clipping. You saw we had the uh, the in a sense the brush clipping mode we could go into. This is where we actually after we've placed clipping markers, like do we want to clip the brush or do we want to split it instead of clipping it? Do we need to flip the clipping normal or do we want to delete all the clipping markers that have currently been placed? Okay, very good. All right, so then from there, next thing we get down into is brush primitives. All right. Now these are those uh, those BSP brushes that we're talking about. What you would actually use if you needed to carve out part of your level, or add to your or level, add, or add back. And each of these have different. If you right click on one of these, you can bring up a properties window, which would be relevant to what you're building. A cube would have height, width, and breadth. Stairs might have like the number of stairs you can create. A cylinder would have a radius, and so on. And these things, what they do is they actually adjust your template brush or your construction brush to match this the shape, if you will. Right. And then you can use that for subtracting out of the level or adding to the level. Exactly. Okay, very good. And then a couple other things real fast. We've got our CSG operations. These guys end up becoming very important throughout the level design process. These are what you would actually use once you have the construction brush. This would say whether you want to use that brush to add, whether you want it to use it to subtract. And then other m interesting things like actually using your brush to conform to another brush, also known as intersecting or the opposite de-intersecting. Okay, very cool. So we're going to be using this a great deal throughout this VTM right here. All right, then uh, just uh, the last two real quick. We've got selection and movement rate icons. All right, this is where if you want to hide, uh, hide or show certain actors or brushes, uh, if you wanted to show all of them, if you wanted to invert your current selection, and then if you wanted to change the camera speed, if you want to speed it up for, say, a huge part of a level, or slow it down if you need to do some very fine vertex editing. Very cool. And then finally, we've got mirror brush and some other miscellaneous icons as well. Right. Okay. So uh, if you want to go ahead and open those back up, just so that we don't get ourselves confused here a little bit later on with everything hidden. All right, now down along the bottom, last area, we've got our command prompt. We've got a log down there with some various settings as well. All right. Uh, command, this is where you can actually type in uh, various commands. Like, you can actually, like, uh, if you look at the log, you can see a few. Or if you happen to know, like, you can actually enable certain stats uh, in the views. And then you can go ahead and open up the uh, the log window if you want to see what the editor's been dumping to the log, or actually see commands that were generated either typed by you or generated by the editor. Okay. And then uh, last, just I guess, real quick over the last couple down there. Uh, you can lock the current selection. Um, Toggle all vertex snap on and off. Toggle grid snap if you need to. Uh, for a very useful and should be kept on for aligning brushes. Uh, s snap to the rotation grid. And draw scale 3D. Okay, very good. So this is just a real quick overview of everything. We're going to start looking at things a lot closer starting in the very next lesson where we will actually create our very first little level. So this should be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and get started. Thanks with this lesson. Thanks a lot, guys.